Well, hello and welcome to a new video where we are going to take a look at the performance difference of the new DeepSeq R1 model when being run on a GPU as compared to a CPU. And for the GPU, we're going to use the RTX 5000 NVIDIA card, while for the CPU, we're going to use the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. And the reason for that is that this model does not support the RX 6900 XT yet, which I have in my desktop system, and therefore I can only run it on the CPU there, while it does support the NVIDIA Quadro RTX 5000 in my laptop. So let's go ahead and run this model. And we're gonna use the same prompt on both systems. We are running the R1 14B model, which is the biggest one, uh, the biggest distilled model, which still fits inside the VRAM capacity of my RTX 5000 here. And therefore is the biggest model which I'm able to run on this machine, at least if I want to run it on a GPU. And as you can see, we have the same parameters on both systems for the model here. And yeah, let's go ahead, save both of them here and run them at the same time or about the same time and start this off. So let's open up the task manager again. And yeah, you can see we are running it on a CPU here. Obviously it's already starting and we're running it on the GPU here on this laptop. And it is already going on both machines, but you can see that while we're struggling on the CPU, our GPU is rushing ahead and is so much faster. So you can see the speed difference between both systems here. So the GPU is actually already finished with the reasoning part and is now going to the output while our CPU is still struggling with the reasoning. And you can see that our GPU uh, or CPU here isn't fully utilized. So that's obviously another part of the inefficiency here. While the GPU has already been finished by now, and you can see that it has been basically fully utilized when it was still processing the prompt. So yeah, obviously the GPU already finished and the CPU is still going and hasn't gone to the output part yet. And while that's still working on, you can see that the RTX 5000 here, just as my 6900 XT has 16 gigabyte of VRAM, which means that I can only use the 14B model. The 32B model would already be too large for this card and would require something like an RTX 3090 with 4, 24 gigabyte of VRAM, which means that if I were to go ahead and use the 32B model on my laptop, I would actually have to use the CPU there as well, because it would then go over and use the system RAM which obviously with the 64 gigabyte here allows me to even go up to the 70B model on my desktop, which is very, very slow, obviously, but it still works and is something which I couldn't do on my laptop though, since we only have 32 gigabyte of system memory here. But yeah, if you can run it on your GPU, you can definitely see that it's a whole lot faster. Obviously that's due to the fact that it's optimized on GPUs or optimized for GPUs, these kind of tasks as compared to CPUs. Uh, but I did have to install the CUDA components here on my laptop in order for it to work on a GPU. So I couldn't just get it to run natively without that. But yeah, afterwards, it definitely worked flawlessly for me, at least if I only use the 14B model. If I went ahead and went to the 32B model, it instantly just ditched the CPU and instead used the CPU. And yeah, you can see just how much slower this one is. I mean, you can look ahead and go to the prompt here again and see just how much output we had here in such a short period of time. Obviously the output or the quality of the output should not be affected by the CPU or GPU which it's running on, but just by the, uh, the large language model which you're using. But I do think this one actually does work a little bit harder on the prompt than this one did here, even though it should still be somewhat comparable. 
But yeah, obviously the output will never be one to one the same, but it should be around the same here. And yeah, we are now going to the output section and have finished the reasoning part. But yeah, obviously we are still going here. So yeah, I don't know how long that took for the GPU, but I think that was only a matter of seconds while we are now sitting here for what, four minutes now for the same prompt. So if you were to uh, extrapolate that for a larger prompt, obviously, which uh, would require more, uh, more power or more uh, time than what we are doing here, which was a simple one sentence prompt here, as you can see, then that would obviously take even longer than what we are seeing here right now. Uh, I can actually attest that for using PDF files or using this uh, language model for scanning through PDF documents and summarizing them, it took forever to even read through the file for the CPU model here. Like it really took something like five minutes alone to read through the, uh, through the text and then another five minutes to uh, write up the conclusion and summary while it was just a matter of seconds once again for the GPU one. So yeah, it's definitely not a good idea to let this run on your CPU if you actually have some time constraints, but it is absolutely possible. But I have to say that the output quality is definitely a lot, lot worse or a lot lacking as compared to ChatGPT. And yeah, you can see right now that we definitely are finished and it took us, what, five minutes to do so as compared to the few seconds which it took for this one here. So yeah, if you have the chance, then you should absolutely run it on your GPU, obviously because as you can see, this is the RTX 5000, which is quite an old GPU by now. It's like from 2019 and therefore only due to the 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which it has, it is such a capable GPU when it comes to large language, large language models. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to them adding support for my beloved 6900 XT here so that I can actually use the same thing on my desktop as well.